Hi everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all to getting started with Android development session on a happy evening. This session is headed by none other than Hira Mustafa, where she'll open up about the world of Android development. And today, Sermat Dalpur is our host for the event. He's a sophomore computer systems engineering student at Mute. He's a programmer, skilled in C++, Java, and Python. He's a front-end web developer as well. He's also a core team member as director of photography. Hi, Sermad, aka Mr. Director Photographer. Welcome. You have the floor now. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Fatma, for introducing me. So, for today's session, Hira Mustafa, our speaker for today, have completed her undergraduate degree in software engineering from Mute, and currently, She's working at Sun Revenue Board, SRB, as Android Development Attorney. So, for your knowledge, Android Development is the process by which applications are created for devices running at the Android operating system. Google states that Android apps can be written using Kotlin, Java, and C++ languages using the Android Software Development Kit while using other languages uh, uh, also possible. So, without wasting much of our time, uh, I am handing over the mic to Hira Mustafa, so, okay, here you can start the session. First of all, hello and good evening to everyone. Thank you, Samad. Thank you, Fatma, for this opportunity and the whole DSC Youth chapter. So, in today's session, we are going to discuss uh, the basic Android development and what are the steps or what are the tools that we need for Android development and uh, uh, why Android development, all these things in this session. So I will be, I'll try to be precise in everything. So not uh, wasting any time, let's just get started. First, first of all, tell me, am I audible to all you guys? Uh, Sarmad, can you confirm or Patma, can you confirm, am I audible? Uh, yes, 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 okay. Yes, you are. Let's get started. Yes, you are uh, quite audible. Okay. Before Android, let's look at the ways in which we can actually develop mobile applications. So, for mobile application development, we had we have three different ways: web, hybrid, uh, web applications, or hybrid applications, or native applications. So uh, native applications are nothing but your actually your websites that are uh, that are responsive on your phones. So uh, that are they are not actually uh, standalone web applications and all, but they are just responsive web pages. Then we have uh, in web web applications we have progressive web applications and single page web applications that we are uh, you are going to see in the next slide. Uh, like in then we have hybrid applications. The hybrid applications are nothing but, uh, you can say they are standalone web applications actually. You can install them, you can, uh, they can have icons and all the uh, all those functionalities of a basic application, but they are embedded, actually embedded web views in an application. Then we have the most important category, native web applications, uh, native applications. In native applications, we have a, uh, these applications are developed for a particular operating system, mobile operating system, such as iOS or uh, Android, or you have BlackBerry OS or uh, Windows Phones OS. So those are all included in native that that we particularly develop for a particular uh, mobile operating system, and the most competitive. Two of the categories in native, we have iOS and Android, obviously the one iPhone users and Android users. Then next, now the question arises, how to uh, decide that uh, on uh, which side of application do you want to go? So, uh, or which application? Uh, 
particular platform so if you want to it to be platform independent you can just go for flutter or react native or any other uh, framework or sdks that provide you this functionality that you can go platform independent or if you want to go for uh, if you don't want it to be platform independent and you uh, in that situation you have native or hybrid applications in native you can uh, similarly go to android ios window uh, windows phones or blackberry uh, and you can use different technologies to uh, develop them then in hybrid you have uh, you acha you can use flutter and react native for platform independent as well as as well as platform dependent applications now the main question is okay, what is android first of all we all know that android is, uh, is developed by or is owned by google and android is nothing but an operating system okay android is an open source linux based operating system for mobile devices such as uh, actually not for mobile devices it's not only now android is not only uh, restricted to mobile devices it's available for your smart watches android based smart watches android based tvs uh, smart tvs or android based uh, tablets smartphones and all these now android is a unified approach to application development for mobile devices so what is mean by that it's a unified approach for application development uh, it simply it means that developers or you guys need to uh, develop an application for uh, in android and that it would be uh, good to run on different android devices such as your uh, uh, different android or dif uh, your mobile devices such as if you are owning a samsung phone or if you are owning uh, any company's phone that is supporting android so you are good to run that application on every uh, every android based device now we see that uh, we have different android versions that uh, significantly show the changes or the operations or the features and the stabilities and all these things uh, by keeping these things in mind uh, google introduced different versions of android time to time so they started from cupcake up to android 11 the latest is android 11 now we have then they all you can see they have uh, named their android versions over suites so but in Android 10 and 11, they started just naming them by versions. Then a question can arise, why Android? Why, why do you want to develop an application in Android? Or why to, uh, you know, give time to Android? So first of all, Android is open source. Obviously, uh, you don't want to, you know, uh, spend your time i uh, spend your money and time on all those things uh, developing from scratch android has provided a lot of their uh, sdks and their libraries that are open source you can just easily use them and uh, modify them according to your use and there is a larger community and developer community that uh, that is using android for developing so and increase marketing you can see the competition of iOS and Android uh, these days. So Android obviously has the lar uh, largest marketing uh, market today. So why not Android? Then we have inter-app integration. And now what is meant by inter-app integration? Inter-app integration means nothing but you can uh, uh, connect your different applications and you can call one application from another application and then higher success ratio obviously it's clear that android has higher success ratio as compared to ios though ios is a you know rich competitor but still android has a higher success ratio and rich development environment all the ids and all the things that are um, used for Android are obviously uh, rich and they provide uh, quite 
you know user friendly and all these things are included so you can easily develop your application in there so this is some statistics from a website a statistic from a website that shows that market shares of our, uh, of android and ios and different uh, you know uh, mobile os makers so they have not taken in account on other others uh, but just let talk about ios and android the competitors so in year 2020 you can see android is owning 85% of the market of the mobile market so and and by 2024 it can reach up to 86% whereas for ios and uh, ios it's just 15% in the year 2020 and it's gonna decrease by the year 2024 so why not android all right this is the question that most of the uh, you know most of the students or most of the people have in mind that is there any career in android or is there any career in android application development so first question is android a good and viable career according to me believe me i am working on android and i guess according to me i believe it's a good um, you know career path to choose because why not like you have already seen the states you can see that android market is growing up so uh, you also have good opportunities you can have good opportunities in actually in android development and you can also research on uh, internet or simply just research on linkedin so you can find find a lot of opportunities for android developers and then Uh, then arises question ke how how to choose uh, you know a particular path or in android development what to do so be specific about the option that you are going to choose whether you want to be a developer or whether you want to start your uh, you know you just want to open up your uh, startup or whether you want to uh, do freelancing or work for any company or you just want to be a educator that uh, you want Uh, some others to learn about android so be specific about the option that you choose any option that you choose it is you know uh, going to give you opportunity and it 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 is good for you and it is useful for you then is it worth learning in 2020 and ahead obviously it's worth learning in 2020 or ahead of the few, uh, in ahead days so i guess there's nothing that is uh, if you are doing something that is never worthless and uh, there are a lot of opportunities as i have already said so you can go for it and the demand is increasing day by day so you can easily uh, you know get a job or uh, start developing any time okay that's just general uh, concepts and all those things all these you know uh tarif and right ki ho gayi so just let talk something you know technical about android so before you start android development you just need to know that in which language you are going to start your development even if it's android you can just not jump to the conclusion that you can only develop that in java there are other languages that you can use to develop android application then you have which software or simply we you can um, you know the id that you are uh, going to use or environment in which you are going to develop your application so here are some languages in which you can uh, develop your application the standard language obviously is java that in which the whole android world is running or in which the all the android applications that you are seeing are most of them are uh, developed using and uh, java and it's in, uh, actually the uh, standard language then you have kotlin okay so kotlin is the secondary official language uh, for developing android applications android based applications 
so you can also uh, develop applications using kotlin or you can use applications using even c++ or c sharp so in if you are developing applications in c++ obviously there uh, you would be using the native libraries of c++ but you have to implement them somehow in uh, you know kotlin or java uh, to uh, you know complete for complete implementation you cannot purely just uh, use c++ for application but you can use the native libraries of c++ through which you can uh, make your application then uh, there are other also other frameworks or uh, you know uh, sdks available that you can use for entire development like there are uh, you can even use python and use its apis i don't exactly remember that name of the api in python that you can use for entry then you have uh, a framework named corona uh, not corona virus but corona there's an sdk that you can also use uh, for android app uh, application development then on the next we have prerequisites that you uh, that you need okay if you are uh, choosing java for example if you are choosing java then what are the uh, you know basic things that you need to keep in mind first of all first of all uh, uh, you can use any operating system you can use mac or uh, mac os or you can use just uh, you know windows operating system or you can use uh, linux any of which uh, you are comfortable with any of which you are using and the thing is that you can start from their lower versions it's, it's not necessary like if you are using a, a windows operating system so you have to start from windows 10 or uh, windows 8 or windows 7 uh, that's not as necessary if you have basic windows xp you are good to start with it then uh, the basic thing obviously if you are choosing java so you need jdk java development kit Okay, so JDK version five or their later uh, latest versions or later versions you can use. Okay, now you see in tools we are uh, there's Android Studio. Whether you uh, download JDK set its environment, you guys uh, I guess would be familiar with how to set uh, Java's environment and all those things. Or uh, simply you can do that. Download Android Studio. Uh, JDK is, uh, also comes with Android Studio. It will ask you whether you want to download JDK through it or not. Then you are good to go. You can download JDK through that also, and uh, then you are you are good to go. Then you have ID, the most important in uh, the most important software or the thing or environment in which you are going to write your code, and you are going to uh, you know run your code. So you can use Eclipse ID, but it's deprecated and no one uses it, uh, it that much now. Then you have Android Studio. Obviously, it's the uh, simple basic that you have used uh, to use Android Studio. Or if there are other IDs available, so you can use those IDs for your development. All right. Now, let's see some uh, architecture of the Android that how android actually works or uh, what's the ba basic thing how our application is made up so okay it's azan i guess so i cannot really talk during azan so just let spread for five minutes if that's fine for you guys Uh, that kernel actually and it's linux kernel then on the second we have uh, hl or hardware abstraction level and um, at the hardware abstraction level we have different libraries actually library modules uh, that have their in, uh, you know interfaces for a specific type of hardware uh, com components such as you have uh, camera or your sensors or your uh, external storage uh, you know you uh, the uh, external by external storage you we mean the uh, USBs or all the, the things that we connect 
when you have uh, Bluetooth or sensors, you have a gyroscope or, uh, you know, uh, different touch sensors and uh, fingerprint sensors and all those sensors are actually based on hardware extraction level. Then on the third, we have Android Runtime and Native Libraries. Okay, Android Runtime basically is the uh, include all the you know uh, core libraries and your SDKs. Uh, uh, no, the, the runtime in which your application runs and native libraries are you know uh, all those libraries that include you know uh, as I said earlier that you are for uh, application development in C plus plus or C sharp. Obviously, you need some uh, libraries, and those are included in native libraries. So, your you know uh, different media frameworks or uh, Surface Manager or different uh, uh, libraries that we can use C plus plus based libraries that we can use in uh, use in our application. Then on Android framework, all the features. Uh, you know, packages, all the uh, APIs and all the uh, content providers are based on Android framework. Uh, Android framework include, you know, uh, you guys do have idea about the APIs, that how APIs work, that you say, uh, simply just think about APIs. You send your data, uh, you send some requests and then that, uh, that response is sent back to you. So your all the all kinds of APIs uh, like your resource manager, your view systems, or your activity managers, all these uh, things are based on some framework and that Android framework um, that are, they are included in Android framework. Now the applications. So the actual application you see are just you know the first layer. Uh, all other layers, you know, uh, there are different layers that made up a, uh, make up an application. So the application that you see is uh, surface layer, the first layer that you see. And that application you can see your different applications like uh, your developed application or uh, already system based applications such as calculators or your emails and your media players, your gallery, everything is, uh, you know, surface layer. So that's the basic architecture, how Android application is made up and what layers are included in that application from Linux kernel to hardware abstraction level. Then you have libraries or runtimes, then you have a framework, then you have an application layer in which uh, you actually see the, your actual application. Okay, now. Okay, before we see that how application is made, let's just talk about some basic things uh, that are actually necessary or basic terms uh, that are actually used in Android, uh, Android world. And uh, you know, when you you will be opening, uh, you, when you will start your Android studio or your um, ID, then it will ask about uh, something about SDKs, NDKs, or uh, how you want to, uh, which SDK version you want to download or, or which NDK version you want to download. Sometimes it doesn't even download and it doesn't install. That's another thing. But Android SDK, you know, the software development kit, basically it's everything. It's the uh, thing that you need, which include all the development tools. You have your uh, uh, debugger, your required libraries, your emulator or uh, you know simple source code uh, codes or tutorials or uh, different things that uh, you require are included in android sdk okay there can be different types of sdks in android yeah, for example you can also add the uh, firebase sdk if you want to connect your application to Firebase, you can add Firebase SDK. There's also option of adding Firebase SDK in Android Studio. You can simply just, you know, um, with a click of mouse, you can just add all these things. You don't have to actually write code to add any SDK. 
I mean, or you can uh, simply uh, copy paste your dependencies in uh, for adding SDK. Then you have Android NDK. Android NDK is native development kit. Native development kit. You see, if you are using language as I have been repeating this, I guess, third, fourth time that if you are using languages like C or C++, you, you uh, need some native code. And that native code is written uh, in form of libraries uh, and those libraries are stored in our native development kit and NDK. We can simply use those libraries and that uh, we don't have to write that code from scratch. We can simply use those libraries. We can, uh, you know, implement that C or C++ or things that we need in our application. Then we have Android runtime. Okay, this is, uh, you know, uh, what Android runtime is. The, uh, Android runtime is, uh, you know, the, the runtime or environment in which your application runs. Okay, so, uh, simply understand it that you have a, a simple byte code or you have your code and you want to, you know, execute it. So how would you execute? You need, obviously you need some environment in which you, uh, you can run your uh, code. So Android runtime, So Android runtime is that environment which converts your, you know, uh, byte code or applications code into native instructions that, uh, that are then later executed. Finally, how we can build an application. So I guess that is the most weighted movement for all of you guys, it's simple. Just write your uh, uh, That's important when you are writing your application, uh, when you are writing your code, or uh, when you are developing an application in Android. You need to, if you are choosing Java, obviously you need some, uh, you know, uh, uh, some language for developing. Then you have, uh, if you are using Java and Android studio so for the uh, you know layouts or the interfaces you need xml so xml is language in which you can write your uh, let's just say front end of your application you can uh, write that using xml then you can uh, uh, write all the code all the functionalities using java uh, you uh, here you can have two options you can simply dra drag and drop different things in uh, you know your layouts or you can also write xml the syntax for xml is also quite you know easy or uh, there's even even easier form you can just by the click of mouse you can just drag and drop everything that you need okay uh, for, uh, now you have written your code in java you have written your code in xml your application is good now you need to generate your uh, you know source files files uh, all the things that you uh, have written, all the files, all the Java files, all the XML files, you need to, uh, you know, uh, now compile them uh, into JVM by, uh, just forget about JVM, just forget about Java virtual machine, just focus on the word bytecode. You need to, or even forget about the bytecode. Uh, you all know how uh, we have to compile our code. Simply, you need to uh, compile your code, then uh, index that, uh, you know, bytecode into Delvic bytecode, then all the, uh, your assets are pegged in and uh, graphics are pegged into an APK, then those APKs are verified and all those things and finally your application is loaded onto it your you know, device so all these things you uh, you guys would be like oh my god we have to do all these things like compile then index it uh, byte code then take those assets and then uh, you know build an apk then sign that apk then load in your device oh my god that's like you know a lot of work for you guys to do so don't worry about that all you have to do uh, like we have 
okay how can we add x and pex and sign those apks simple option is uh, you know answer for all this is gradle you uh, now what is gradle it's an advanced automated build system okay so you can simply all you have to do is open up and write studio write your code write your xml code or uh, drag and drop the things that you in, uh, need in application uh, and uh, write their functionality in your java classes and then just click run even there's a shortcut key uh, just do that and all of your work will be uh, done then you can you know run that application in your mobile phone or you can run your application in your emulator so and uh, android studio basically use that uh, gradle that automatically you know manage and build all the all the processes and uh, uh, converts them compile your code and index your code and uh, in the runtime uh, you know the that we have discussed in uh, runtime environment and does this all things and just gives you output that's uh, like you can you know that is the thing that rich development environment thing that you you uh, you are using rich development environment for android you don't have to uh, think about all these things just everything is just click away just write your code and you are simply good to go and through gradle you can do all these things and your application will be good to go so if we have time do we have some time that i i can show you know android studio and just a quick demo of how everything works in android studio do we have time fatma samad can anybody tell me Uh, yes, uh, Hira, we do have time. We can, uh, you know, show people how it's gonna really work in Android. And yeah, I do really want to know. So yeah, you can go on. Okay. Maybe a hello word can be enough for all of us to know actually the environment and stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. That would be only hello word. Okay. Let me pause my sharing for a while. Okay, my screen is visible to everyone. Screen is visible. Uh, yes, it yes. is. Yes, it is. As I have told you, first of all, you all need to download Android Studio. Uh, first of all, actually download JDK. And then set up its environment. All of you know that you. Uh, if you are from uh, you know cs background or softwares background you know how to set up the environment for uh, java so just set that set up that environment then download android studio or simply download an android studio jdk comes with it uh, install it set up its environment then you know start your android studio i have already opened up a project so all you need is uh, to do is when uh you fire up your android studio you need to create a new project let me just create a new project here okay when you create a new project you have here you know different type of activities that how you want to open up your uh, application so you have basic activity in which you have just button or navigation activities or empty activities or uh, even google maps activities login activities and login activity you don't have to write all those things or you don't have to add those boxes and everything it it comes just you just have to write those all those functionalities 
even google maps activities google uh, maps are embedded and you just have to write how you are going to use them in your application how you you are going to modify them according to your use then there are different type of activities uh, you have navigation drawer settings activities scrolling activities this navigation or side menu activity that you say then fragments or fragments is an advanced thing that you can i guess i uh, you're going to learn soon later or soon if you want to you know really want to develop applications then fragments are really important for you okay let's just choose empty activity uh, then you are going to click next uh, you are going to name your application for example i mean just name it uh, dsc here in language uh, you can choose any uh, location that you want to place your application in then here in language sec the section you can see that android studio gives you op option whether you want to write your application in kotlin or whether you want to uh, write your uh, you know application in java so i as i told you earlier that kotlin is you know the secondary uh, language to write now uh, and secondary android uh, application development language so we are going to just use java because you know java i have worked on it okay so you are going to choose a, uh, here comes the sdk minimum sdk or api level that you are going to use or it's the you know versions of android that we already see, uh, saw okay there are different versions we have jelly bean then kitkat then kitkat beer lollipop marshmallow nougat oreo pi q or all these you know uh, android versions and there are different api levels available so you can just choose according to your need that which api level you you need and then just create your uh, okay let's just do api 26 okay here it will show the states that how uh, how much you know uh, percent of the devices it is going to support for example 60.8% android devices are you know, you know uh, now using api 26 and android 8.0 or android or your version so you can see that how, how much you know devices are using how much uh, percent of the, uh, how much percent of the devices that a particular version is using so yeah, let's just take api 26 and android Oreo. and then you click finish and you see here scanning files to index and two processes running uh, okay here is this build thing it is building it is basically all that gradle thing and all those thing you don't have to do anything just click away and it's going to build your model it's going to uh, you know do everything for you Okay, when your project is, you know, you have created your project. So on the top, you have this package name. You all guys must know what the package is and all these things. And then uh, we have some libraries here imported. Uh, okay, here comes it. It's Android X dot F compat dot F. Uh, compat activity and all these you are, you will also see if you choose you know lower api lower apis then you will see here written uh, instead of android x it would be uh, yeah, written android dot something android dot widget or android dot app compat all all these things so but now you know recommended it's recommended by google to use android x and then here we have men class and all these things and we have there here you know this thing super dot on create whatever you are going to write whatever functionalities or what uh, function you want to actually your application need to do you are going to write that in on create method this is on create is actually method that you are going to uh, 
write that in on create method okay uh, it's all you know it's all java and it's a java class simply just consider it as a java class now you'll see here activity.xml file this is the java file here you have this you know layout file your xml file so here you have different options text um, you can uh, add different text options you uh, just want to add a text to you or plain text or even if you want to use password you can just simply you know drag and drop it just drag from here and drop here and then you have you know here text uh, password field you can just uh, simply set its constraints and uh, write its functionality in your java uh, in your java class then you have email phone postal address all these options available in your you know uh, text category uh, check text views or text inputs layouts everything then you have buttons in buttons you have simple buttons or you can use image buttons or you know check boxes your radio buttons all those things you can just simply uh, you everything is just drag and drop away just drag and uh, drag it and drop in your layout or this is basically your layout or just call it a screen then you have different widgets available that you can use like progress bar or seek bar or rating bar or search view you can add anything you want according to your use it's just so simple all you need to do is just you know little things and you learn a little you have different layouts you have different containers you have helpers uh, all those things you know from google as i said you know you have map views or you have add views uh, you can add them in the legacy you have uh, you know grid layout list views or tags or relative layouts any kind of layout you want to uh, add you can just add okay this is the option you can just drag and drop everything or or you can uh, split it and you can see all this xml code written here you can simply if you have learned html so xml won't be an issue for you so here you can see this code written here this is nothing but the actual text view that was already uh, when we created our project by default this text view was added so it's code for the text view so if you want to just drag and drop anything you can if you want to write the code xml code if you are comfortable in this uh, it's actually a better approach and be, uh, better practice to write xml code but if you don't want to you don't want to waste your time just drag and drop even if you are dragging and dropping anything let me just show uh, for example i'm adding a button here okay i have added a button here if you split it up you can see here the code automatically generated for button you need uh, and there are different type of layouts that actually you know you can use there is constant layout there is relative layout there is linear layout that you can use according to your need or you can use even fragments in uh, more things you want to uh, use in them you can simply just even if you are not learning anything you can uh, use youtube for uh, all those tutorials everything is available on youtube uh, everything is available on uh, diff there are different android you know free courses available on internet or do nothing and just read their official documents you know and write official documents just read them from basics you will know everything you will know how to do everything they have you know different tutorials and all those things you can just uh, read them and start developing so you can see i have added a button so here the code for button is automatically generated whether now let's just say i want to you know add constraints to it 
Hello. Uh, meanwhile, we do the coding and stuff. I, I want everyone to know that the feedback form uh, is up on the chat. Um, you guys can fill the feedback form and then you will get the recording of the session as well and all the slides. So do fill the feedback form. In return, you will get um, the certificates as well, obviously, for the participation on, in the session. And yeah, you'll get the, the sessions recording as well. So do fill the feedback form. And the surprise in the end is also waiting, you guys. So we'll just wrap this up in real in no time. You can continue, Hera. What's wrong with my keyboard? Interpreter can type. Okay. Hmm. You can add constraints any uh, any way you want. You can see here. Uh, you know how this uh, how this. Text views constraints are set. Uh, you can see these wires connecting this to uh, you know your actual layout, and you can place it anywhere you want. So you need to set those constraints for your button also. You can just simply connect this. And you can place this button anywhere. You can place this text view anywhere. And uh, you have here uh, when you come back in design or uh, directly from that you have this attributes of you know uh, option from which you can you know set this col uh, button or text views or uh, their colors and everything. You have your background color, you have uh, text sizes or text that you want to add, everything that you need. Java and XML, just let's, uh, let's just look at the environment of Android Studio. All those things that I was talking about, you know, SDKs and uh, all those things. And let me just show you. Here you can see we have SDK manager. You simply click on that and a window pop up opens and you can you know uh, download uh, different SDK platforms. You can now uh, here can see different versions of Android available here or all those SDKs available for those versions. You can install them, just uh, they are just click away, just, you know, select them, download them, apply. And then you have SDK tools, all the SDK, uh, you know, tools that you need in your uh, projects, your different Google drivers or web drivers, or you have uh, this thing, NDK, if you want to download it, if you want to install it, if you want to use it in your application, you're good to go, just check it, download it, and use it. And you have uh, Android emulator, if you don't want to run your application on actual device, just download emulator, it's, it comes with, you know, embedded emulator, and you can just download that emulator and uh, run your application on that emulator. All these things you will, uh, I just click away, just click them, download them, install them, and they are good to go. Just add their dependencies and you are good to go. Okay, this is all about SDKs and NDKs. And let me show you another uh, NDK. Oh, sorry, SDK. Okay, in tool 
section you can see here firebase when you click it uh, here in the assistant portion you know they are available like whatever you know, functionality of firebase you want to add you want to apply you know, add cloud functions of firebase or firebase machine learning or nip messaging anything you want to add or simply you scroll up and here you have authentication uh, this is basically the simplest thing that we add uh, database real time or fire store database or authentication that we use for sign in or uh, messages or emails you can just add them and you have a lot of things that you can learn and add them okay it's basically all the uh, that gave uh, firebase ka sdk aapko download um, you know add karna hai when you click this um, you need to you know log on and uh, add some dependencies and that uh, firebase uh, sdk or that particular uh, you know function function of firebase that sdk would be added in your uh, project and you you are good to go then here you can see uh manifest file in which all the activities or all these uh, java classes simply uh what we are creating here this activity xml file and java file combinedly they are called activity that we created all those activities you know are uh, defined here you can see here in manifest file you uh, similarly you have written everything in uh xml and you can see here activity tag application tag tag intent filter and all these tags available uh, for the activity that we created these all are auto generated files so if you are manually creating any activity so you need to uh, you know declare that or define that activity here first but most of the time that doesn't happen and you uh, just you know create any activity and it automatically you know uh, comes in manifest file then you have java thing in which you have your java class then in resource file you have drawable drawab folder you have layout there as well map map and you have values and all these things all these is auto generated things that i guess um, maybe if you want to learn about android you can learn you will come to know about all these things that what is placed in what folder and all these things okay so uh, in resource we have you know basic layout so in layout fi uh, file you are all those xml files your activities xml files Uh, or your layout files are placed here so you can check them there and in gradle scripts your actual this is uh, in gradle you have uh, project level uh, build out gradle or your app level build out grid uh, build files in which you actually add all those dependencies and all those sdks that i have been talking about so you need to uh, you know add those sdks and all those things in these files all these all those dependencies you can add here your build types your versions everything you can add in here so that's it that's all about android studio and then once you are finished with it once you have finished developing your application just click here run and just click run or just press shift and f10 and your application will be here so and here you can see if you have created any emulator or you want to run it on multiple devices or if you have connected any uh, you, you know your phone so you uh, that would be shown here okay this particular device is uh, devices connected so if you want to run it on emulator you want to run it on your uh, physical device you can do that so just choose that and just click run it's not going to run obviously it's going to give errors this time because 
I haven't defined anything. You can see uh, when I click run this build, everything is merging up, everything, you know, that compiling, that dexing the file. Uh, so we have to get it done. Yeah, time to compile and stuff. Um, so I would just want, um, probably this this would be the end of uh, the experience thingy of this, uh, you know, um, ID and stuff, right? Yeah, this this is just the end. Okay, so before we close off the session, we'll um, ask for for people to uh, attention like for five minutes only for something that that was planned up as a surprise. Yeah, that is a surprise. Excited, I'm excited too to share that. Um, so all that Hira told, you might be confused like um, where to apply, where to implement that uh, things together. So the surprise is we will be you know, we are arranging a boot camp starting this 28th November. That is completely on Android development from which you can make a complete Android developer. And it's going to be like uh, totally by people from students from 17 batch and to make you all you know all good in android development so you can be an industry expert and so you can get the jobs as well so just tune in android development so this whole season will be of android and if you really do want to learn android from this sem people or, or students who are students actually from 17 and f16 batch they have really good grip in android and so do i want them to speak up for you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. And yeah, hoping to see you guys becoming the gurus of Android development. And that's pretty much it for the surprise. And yeah, I'm excited to see you all again on 28th November. Even I'm excited for all this boot camp. If yeah, I got your time, I will be joining you guys. Inshallah. So it's like totally for beginners and have planned up everything. Everyone will is going to show up who has the interest to build something now. So, yeah. And anyone from you guys, if you have got any questions, you can ask. Yes, sure. Everyone, you can just drop in your messages and questions. It will be online because Liba, um, we have some situations that we are in. We can't do physical workshops or sessions right now, but sooner or later we'll do arrange physical workshops and it's going to be amazing. We'll call out many speakers to come and join us. Looks like everyone is excited for the boot camp. Ah, uh, inshallah. <laughs> Yeah, Faisal, every, uh, we'll be notifying you on our Facebook pages if you haven't already been a member of the page or on our community platform. I can drop in the link here. You guys can join and you guys can get up to date with all of the information. I'm dropping the link, by the way. If you do have, uh, if you guys do have questions, you can just ask Hera because uh, she's also an intern at Sindh Revenue Board. She's an amazing Android developer as well. She would be happy to answer all of your questions. Guys, if you do have questions, please drop the questions in the chat box. Uh, Faisal, ask away your question. Faisal, you can write the question in the chat box.
also um, these are uh, this is our community platform where we uh, we, we will be updating uh, uh, you guys about the events and sessions boot camps for you guys to become the good developers good industry developers so yeah just to join uh, through this link and if you guys do have questions you can ask them right now it was completely an introduction um, session so you guys can you know get going with android development for the boot camp that is coming so looking forward to seeing you all again Vera uh, Faisal has a question. Basically, it was a good question. Um, yes, Samad, you can go on telling her. Yeah. Faisal asking, how do you see developers' career in emerging market? Yes, sir, I have already showed you the stats. I have shown you the statistic that was not my statistic that uh, was taken from some, uh, you know, uh, website so it clearly showed that how much android uh, market is you know going up and you can simply just uh, forget everything and just go on linkedin just uh, you know search their jobs or vacancies for android developers you can see that uh, there would be many opportunities for android developers or uh, you know internships or anything you can get and even in SRB, where I am working, I am working in Android. There are different Java developers. There are, uh, you know, different people working in IT department. And I am the only one working there on Android. So they don't have Android developer there. So, uh, and everything you are seeing that from websites and even everything is digital, I think. Uh, there was a boom that uh, everything is coming online and everything everyone is uh, you know making their websites then there came a boom that every uh, you know website need or web app need now uh, an application so now we have uh, application for everything you see that uh, pinterest went from application uh, you know website to now uh, application mm -hmm. and different websites also have their applications now so why not why can't you see that uh, that uh, even in android or in ios uh, or even hybrid applications everything is coming on phone because phone is handy and you need applications in that you need to uh, run all those functionalities on your application that are user friendly so yes uh, it is an emerging career and uh, you know developers have a good career in, in this market Is it clear? To me, it sure is. I hope Faisal got it too. And I guess if nobody has any questions, we can wrap this off. And um, Sarmad, you can go on ending this session. If yeah. <clears throat> Thank you Ella, for such an amazing session. We really learned a lot. Uh, I guess there's a question. Um, there's a thing or myths I, I hear a lot when AI will or I should it already there won't be need of development. Okay, AI. so uh, oh, okay, sure. okay, let me just answer it for Faisal. You see, Faisal, uh, actually, AI is coming toward you know in applications also. Even my FYP was. Uh, you know, Android application based in AI. You know, AI based Android application. So you can you cannot say if AI is coming, so uh, there's no, uh, there won't be any need of need for development. Obviously, for AI, you need you know uh, you need development to run AI. So AI and development they are interlinked. They uh, one cannot go further without any other. So even if you are using Android, even if you are using uh, websites, you, you you can use AI in them. If you are using AI, you need uh, some backend, you need some code for it. You, how you gonna write it? Obviously you need development for that. So you need, you know, development, you need developers. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so Sermon, without any further ado, yeah. we can skip. 
Yeah. Thank you Ella, for such an amazing session. We really uh, liked your session. We really uh, learned a lot about Android development. Personally, I really learned a lot from your session. And if we do not have any questions, so we can end our session here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking the time. Love is. Love is.